The Fourth Tablet Nibiru Words of the ascent were beamed. On Nibiru there was much expecting. With confidence was Abgal, the chariot guiding. Around Kingu, the moon, he made a circuit. By its net powers, speed to gain. A thousand leagues, ten thousand leagues, toward Lamu he journeyed. By its net power, a direction towards Nibiru to obtain. Beyond Lamu, the hammered bracelet was a-whirling. Deftly did Abgal, Ea's crystals make glow, the open path to locate. The eye of fate upon him with favor looked. Beyond the bracelet, the chariot beam signals from Nibiru was receiving. Homeward, homeward was the direction ahead in the darkness, in reddish hue glowed. Nibiru, a sight to behold, was. By the beam signals, the chariot was now directed. Thrice around Nibiru it would make circuits by its net force to be slowed. Nearing the planet, the breach in its atmosphere of Gaul could see. A squeezing in his heart he felt of the gold he was bringing, he was thinking. Passing through the atmosphere, thickness aglow was the chariot, its heat overbearing. Deftly did Abgal spread the chariot's wings, its descent thereby arresting. Beyond law, the place of the chariots, a sight most inviting. Gently did Abgal the chariot bring down to a place by the beam selected. He opened the hatch, a multitude of populace was there assembled. Anu towards him stepped forward, locked arms, warm greetings uttered. Heroes into the chariots rushed, the gold-bearing baskets they brought out. High above their heads they the baskets held. To the assembled words of victory Anu shouted, Salvation is here, to them he was saying. In the palace was Abgal accompanied, to rest and tell all he was escorted. The gold, a sight most dazzling, by the servants was quickly taken, to make of it the finest dust, to skyward launch it was hauled away. A shard did the fashioning last, a shard did the testing continue. With rockets was the dust heavenward carried, by crystals, beams was it dispersed. Where there was a breach, now there was a healing. Joy the palace filled, abundance in the land was expected. To earth Anu gave good words of beaming. Gold gives salvation, the obtaining of gold do continue. When Nibiru near the sun came, the golden dust was by its rays disturbed. The healing in the atmosphere was dwindled, the breach to bigness returned. Anu, the return of Abgal to earth, then commanded, in the chariot more heroes traveled, in its bowels more that which the waters suck in and thrust out were provided. With them Nungal to travel was commanded, a pilot helper to Abgal to become. Great joy there was when Abgal to Iridu returned. Many greetings and the locking of arms there was. The new writer's workings Ea with care contemplated. There was smiling on his face. In his heart there was a squeezing. By shar time, Nungal in the chariot was departed ready. In its bowels the chariot only a few baskets of gold carried. The disappointment on Nibiru, Ea's heart to him was predicting. Ea with Alilu words exchanged that which was known they reconsidered. If earth, the head of Tiamat, was in the celestial battle cut off, where was the neck? Where were the golden veins cut asunder? Where were the golden veins from earth's innards protruding? In the sky chamber, Ea, over mountains and valleys traveled. The lands by oceans separated, he with the scanner examined. Again and again there was the same indication. Where dry land from dry land apart was torn, earth's innards were revealed. Where the land mass, the shape of the heart was given, and the lower part thereof, golden veins from earth's innards were abundant. Abzu, the gold, the birthplace, Ea, to the region, the name was given. Ea then to Anu, words of wisdom beamed. With gold earth indeed is filled, from the veins, not from the waters, the gold must be gotten. From earth's bowels, not from its waters, must the gold be obtained. 
from a region beyond the ocean abzu it shall be called can an abundance of gold be gotten in the palace there was great astonishment servants and counsellors to ia's words gave consideration the gold must be obtained on that unanimity there was how to obtain it from the bowels of the earth of that there was much discussion in the assembly a prince spoke up and lil he was the half-brother of ia first alalu then his son by marriage ia upon waters placed all hope of salvation by waters gold they were reassuring shar after shar all of us salvation were expecting now different words we are hearing a task beyond imagining to undertake proof of the golden veins is needed a plan for success must be ensured so was enlil to the assembly saying to his words many in agreement listened let enlil go to earth and it was saying let him proof obtain a plan put forward his words shall be heeded his words a command shall be in unanimity the assembly its consent gave enlil's mission it approved with alagar his chief lieutenant enlil for earth departed alagar his pilot was with each a sky chamber were the two of them provided to earth the words of anu the king words of decision were beamed enlil of the mission in command shall be his words shall be the command when enlil on earth arrived ea with his half-brother warmly locked arms as brother meets brother ea and lil did welcome to alalu and lil made a bowing alalu with weak words him bade welcome the heroes to enlil words of warm welcome were shouting of the commander much were expecting deftly enlil the sky chamber to be assembled did command in the sky chamber he went a soaring alagar his chief lieutenant was the pilot with him ea in the sky chamber by abgal piloted to them to the abzu showed the way they surveyed the dry lands of the oceans they took careful notice from the upper sea to the lower sea the lands they scanned of all that was above and all that was below they took account in the abzu the soil they tested gold there was indeed with much soil and rocks it was commixed refined as in the waters it was not in an admixture it was hiding they went back to iridu what they have found they contemplated iridu new task must be given alone on earth it cannot continue thus was enlil saying a great plan he described a wide mission he was proposing more heroes to bring over more settlements to establish the gold from earth's innards to obtain the gold from the admixture to separate by sky ships and chariots to be carried from landing places tasks to perform who of the settlements in charge will be who of the abzu shall take command thus was ea and enlil asking who of enlarged iridu shall the command who the settlement shall oversee thus was alalu saying who of the sky ships and the landing place shall take command so did anzu inquire let anu come to earth let him decisions provide thus did enlil say in answer now this is the account of how anu to earth came how lots with ea and enlil were drawn how ea and the title name inki was given how alalu for the second time with anu wrestled to earth in the celestial chariot did anu journey the route by the planets it followed around lahamu ningal the pilot a circuit made by anu was it closely observed the moon the one who kingu once had been they circled and admired perchance gold therein can be found in his heart anu wondered in the waters beside the marshlands his chariot splashed down ea for the arrival reed boats prepared for anu to arrive by sailing above the sky chambers were hovering a royal welcome they were offering in the land boat ea himself was afloat the king and his father the first to be greeting before anu he bowed then anu embraced him my son my firstborn anu to him shouted 
In the square of Erdu and rose stood the heroes, their king to earth royally to welcome. In front of them stood Enlil, their commander, before Anu, the king, he bowed. Anu, him to his chest embraced. Alilu, too, was there standing. Of what to do, he was uncertain. Anu to him a greeting extended. Let us lock arms as comrades, to Alilu, he said. With hesitation, Alilu stepped forward. With Anu he locked arms. A meal for Anu was prepared. By eve time, to a reed hut, for him, by Iad built, Anu retired. The next day, the seventh by the count began, by Ia was a day of resting. A day of backslapping and celebrating it was, as befeats a king's coming. On the day that followed, Ia and Enlil, before Anu the findings presented. What was done, and what doing needed with him, they discussed. Let me see the lands myself, Anu to them were saying. Aloft they all in the sky chambers went, lands from sea to sea they observed. To the Abzu they flew, on its gold-hiding soil they landed. Difficult would the gold's extraction be, Anu was saying. No matter how deep the gold is below the surface, it must be gotten. Let Ia and Enlil tools for the purpose devise, let them heroes for the task assign. Let them find how gold from soil and rock separates, how to Nibiru pure gold to deliver. Let a landing place be built. Let more heroes to the task on earth be assigned. So is Anu to the two sons saying. In his heart, of way stations in the heavens, he was thinking. Those were the commands of Anu, Ea and Enlil in agreement, their heads were bowing. There were evenings and there were mornings. To Eridu they all returned. In Eridu they held a council, task and duties to assign. Ea, who Eridu established, was the first to speak up. Eridu have I established. Let other settlements in this region be set up. Let it the Eden be, a dobe of the upright ones, by this name to be known. The commander of the Eden, let me be. Let Enlil the gold extraction perform. By these words Enlil was angered. The plan is wrongful, to Anu he said. Of commanding and task to perform, I am the better. Of sky ships, I have the knowledge. Of the earth and its secrets, my half-brother Ea is the knower. The Abzu he discovered, let him of the Abzu be the master. Anu to the angry words with careful ear listen. The brothers were again half-brothers. The firstborn, with the legal heir, with words as weapons were contending. Ea was the firstborn son. By a concubine to Anu he was born. Enlil, thereafter, born by Antu, Anu's spouse, was conceived. A half-sister of Anu she was, thereby Enlil the legal heir making. Thereby the next-born son of the succession, the first-born overcoming. A conflict that the obtainment of gold would endanger Anu was fearing. One of the brothers to Nibiru must return. The succession from considering must now be removed. So was Anu himself thinking. Aloud to the two a startling suggestion he made. Who to Nibiru for the throne seat shall return? Who the Eden shall command? Who in the Abzu shall be the master? Let us three, I with you, by lots determine. Silent were the brothers. The audacious words by surprise them overtook. Let us draw lots, Anu said. By the hand of fate, let there be a decision. The three, father and the two sons, clasped their hands together. They cast lots. By the lots, the task they divided. Anu to Nibiru to return, its ruler on the throne to remain. The Eden to Enlil was allotted to be lord of the command, as his name indicated. More settlements to establish of the sky ships and their heroes charged to take of all the lands until they the bar of the seas encounter, the leader to be. To Ea the seas and the ocean as his domain were granted, lands beyond the bar of the waters by him to be governed, in the Abzu to be the master, with ingenuity the gold to procure. In Lil with the lots was agreeable, the hand of fate he with a bow accepted. Ea's eyes filled with tears, 
of Eridu and the Eden he wished not to be parted. Let Ea forever Eridu as his home retain, Anu to Enlil was saying. Let his being the first to splash down forever be remembered. Let Ea as Earth's master be known, Enki, Earth's master, let his title be. His father's words Enlil with a bow accepted. To his brother he thus said, Enki, Earth's master, your title name shall henceforth be, I, Lord of the Command, shall be known. To the heroes in assembly, Anu, Inki, and Enlil, the decisions announced. The tasks are assigned, success is in the offing, Anu to them was saying. Now farewell I can bid you, to Nibiru with quiet heart I can return. Forward, to Anu Alalu stepped. A grave matter has been forgotten, he shouted. The master of the earth to me was allotted. That was the promise when the gold finds to Nibiru I announced. Nor have I the claim to Nibiru's throne forsaken. By Anu to share all with his sons is to grave abomination. Thus did Alalu, Anu, and the decisions challenge. Without words was Anu in the beginning. Then with anger he spoke up. By a second wrestling let our dispute be decided. Let us the wrestling do here. Let us do it now. With the disdain Alalu took off his clothing. Likewise did Anu unrobe. In nakedness did the two royals begin to grapple. A mighty struggle it was. Alalu bent his knee. To the ground Alalu fell. Anu on the chest of Alalu with his foot pressed down. Victory in the wrestling thereby declared. By wrestling the decision was made. I am the king. To Nibiru Alalu shall not return. So was Anu saying as he removed his foot from the fallen Alalu. Up as lightning, Alalu from the ground arose. By the legs, Anu, he pulled down. His mouth was wide open. Swiftly, he, the male hood of Anu, bit off. The male hood of Anu did Alalu swallow. In pained agony did Anu a cry to the heaven shout. To the ground, wounded, he fell. Inki, to the fallen Anu, rushed. In Lil, the laughing Alalu, captive held. Heroes, Ananu to his hut carried, words of accusations against Alalu he uttered. Let justice be done, Enlil to his lieutenant shouted. With your beam weapon, let Alalu be killed. No, no, Inki fiercely shouted. Justice is within him. In his innards, poison has entered. They took Alalu to a reed hut, his hands and feet as a prisoner they bound. Now this is the account of the judging of Alalu and the happening thereafter on earth and on Lamu. In his reed hut, Anu was hurting. In the reed hut to him, Inki applied the healing. In his reed hut, Alalu was sitting. Spittle he spat from his mouth. In his innards, the malehood of Anu was like a burden. With Anu's semen were his innards impregnated, like a female in trivial, his belly grew swollen. On the third day, Anu's pain subsided. His pride was greatly hurting. To Nibiru, I wish to return. To his two sons, did Anu say. Beforehand, upon Alalu, there must be a judgment, a sentence, the crime befitting must be imposed. By the laws of Nibiru, seven judges were required, the highest of ranks on them to preside. In the square of Erdu, the heroes were assembled, the trial of Alalu to observe. For the seven who judge, seven seats were provided. For Anu, presiding, the tallest seat was prepared. To his right, Inki was seated. Enlil was seated to Anu's left. On Inki's right, Anzu and Ningal were seated. Abgal and Alagar, to the left of Enlil, sat. Both these seven, who judge Alalu, was brought. His hands and feet were untied. Enlil was the first to speak. In fairness, a wrestling match was held. Alalu, the kingship to Anu forfeited. What say you, Alalu? Inki him this question asked. In fairness, the wrestling match was held. The kingship I forfeited, Alalu said. Having been vanquished, Alalu, an abominable crime performed. The malehood of Anu, he bit and swallowed. Thus did Enlil the accusation of the crime make. Death is the punishment, Enlil was saying. What say you, Alalu, Inki, 
his father by marriage asked. There was silence. Alleluia, the question did not answer. We all the crime did witness, Alleligar was saying. Judgment must be in accordance. If words you wish to utter, speak before the judging, Inki to Alleluia said. On Nibiru I was king. By right of succession I was reigning. Anu was my cupbearer. The princes he aroused to a wrestling, he me challenged. For nine counted circuits I was king on Nibiru. To my seed kingship was belonging. On my throne seat Anu himself sat. To escape death to distant earth I made a dangerous journey. Salvation for Nibiru I, Alilu, on the alien planet discovered. Return to Nibiru I was promised, in fairness, the throne to regain. Then to earth came Ea, the one by compromise, the next to reign Nibiru, he was designated. Then came Enlil, the succession from Anu to himself claiming. Then Anu came, by lots he tricked Ea. Inki, the lord of earth, he was proclaimed, of earth, not of Nibiru, to be the master. Then to Enlil command was granted. Inki to the distant Abzu was delegated. My heart of all that was aching. My chest from the shame and anger was bursting. Then Anu his foot upon my chest placed. Upon my aching heart he was treading. In the silence Anu spoke up. By royal seed and law, by fair wrestling did I gain the throne. My malehood you bit off and swallowed, my offspring's line to discontinue. And Lil spoke up, to the crime the accused admitted, let the judgment come, let death the punishment be. Death, said Aladagar, death, said Abgal, death, said Nungal, death to Alilu by itself will be coming. What he had swallowed in his innards death will bring, Inky was saying. Let Alilu for the rest of his days on earth be in poison, Anzu was saying. Their words Anu was contemplating, anger and pity both him engulfed. To die in exile, let this be the judgment, Anu was saying. In amazement, the judges at each other glanced. What Anu was saying, they wondered. Neither on earth nor on Nibiru shall the exiling be, Anu was saying. On the way there is the Lamu planet, with waters and an atmosphere it is endowed. Inki, as Ea, thereon made a pause. Of it, as a way station, have I been thinking. Its net force is less than that of Earth's force. An advantage in wisdom to be considered. In the celestial chariot, Alilu shall be taken. On my departing from Earth, he, with me, shall make the journey. Around the planet Lamu we shall make circuits, to Alilu a sky chamber we shall provide. To the planet Lamu in it we will be descending. Alone on a strange planet an exile he shall be, his days to his last day by himself to count. Thus did Anu words of judgment utter, in solemnity, were the words intended. By unanimity was the judgment upon Alilu imposed in the presence of the heroes it was announced. Let Ningal be my pilot to Nibiru, therefrom chariots bearing heroes again to earth to pilot. Let Enzu join the journey of the descent to Lamu, take charge. So did Anu commandments utter. On the morrow departing was ready. All who depart by boats to the chariot were ferried. A place for the landing on firm soil you must prepare, Anu to Enlil was saying. How Lamu was a way station to utilize. Plans you should be making, farewells there were, both joy and sorrow. Limping did Anu on the chariot embark, with his hands tied did Alilu the chariot enter. Then to the heavens the chariot soared up, and the royal visit had ended. They around the moon made a circuit. Anu by the sight was enchanting. Toward the red-hued Lamu they journeyed, twice about it they circled. Lower towards the strange planet they came, mountains sky high and tears in the surface they noticed. Where Ea's chariot had once landed they observed, by a lakeside it was located. Slowed by Lamu net power in its chariot the sky chamber they readied. Anzu, its pilot, then unexpected words to Anu was saying, 
With Alalu to the firm soil of Lamu I shall descend. With the sky chamber to the chariot to return I wish not. With Alalu on the strange planet I shall stay. Until he dies I shall protect him. When he dies of his innards poison, as befits a king, him I shall bury. As for me I shall have made my name, Anzu, they will say, against all odds to a king in exile a companion was. He saw things by others unseen, on a strange planet he faced unknown things. Anzu, they will to the end of times shall say like a hero has fallen. There were tears in the eyes of Alalu, there was amazement in the heart of Anu. Your wish shall be honored to Anzu, Anu said. Hereby let a promise by me to you be made. By my raised hand to you I this swear. On the next journey by chariot by Lamu shall circuit, its sky ship to you shall descend. If alive, it shall find you, the master of Lamu you shall be proclaimed. When a way station on Lamu shall be established, its commander you shall be. Anzu bowed his head. So be it, to Anu he said. Into the sky chamber, Alalu and Anzu were ushered. With eagles' helmets and fishes' suits they were provided, with food and tools they were supplied. From the circling chariot the skyship departed, from the chariot its descent was observed. Then from view it disappeared, and the chariot to Nibiru continued. For nine shars was Alalu king on Nibiru, for eight shars Iridu he commanded, and the ninth shar to die in exile on Lamu was his fate. Now this is the account of the return of Anu to Nibiru, and how Alalu on Lamu was buried, how Enlil on earth the landing place built. On Nibiru there was for Anu a joyous welcome. Of what had happened to the council and the princes Anu gave account, neither pity nor vengeance from them all he sought. To discuss the task ahead he them all instructed, to assemble a vision great in scope he outlined, way stations from Nibiru to earth to establish, all the sun's family in one kingdom to encompass, the first on Lamu to be fashioned, the moon for the plans also to be considered, on the other planet or their circling host stations to set up, a chain of constant caravan of chariots to supply and safeguard, the gold from earth without interruptions to Nibiru bringing, perchance gold elsewhere to also find. The counselors, the princes, the savants, Anu's plans considered. The salvation of Nibiru in the plans they all promised Saul. Savants and commanders knowledge of the celestial gods perfected. To chariots and sky ships a new kind rocket ships were added. Heroes for the task were selected. For the tasks there was much learning. The plans to Inki and Enlil were beamed over, preparations on earth to hurry, they were told. On earth of what had happened and what to be done is required, there was much discussion. Inki, Alalagard, to be of Iridu the overseer appointed, his own steps to the Abzu he directed, where to obtain gold from earth's bowels he then determined, what heroes to the tasks are needed he calculated, what tools were required he contemplated, on earth splitter with the cleverness Inky designed, on Nibiru that it be fashioned he requested, there within the earth to make a gash, its innards reached by way of tunnels, that which crunches and that which crushes he also designed, on Nibiru for the Abzu to be fashioned, of other matters Nibiru's savant he to contemplate asked. Of matters of earth and of well-being of heroes, the need he listed. To the heroes earth's quick circuits were upsetting. Earth's quick day and night cycles dizziness was causing. The atmosphere, though good, was in some thickness lacking, and others too abundant. Of the sameness of the food the heroes were complaining. And Lil the commander, by the heat of the sun on earth, was afflicted. For coolness and shade he was longing. While in the Abzu, inky preparations was making. And Lil in the skyship, the extent of the Eden, was surveying. 
Of mountains and rivers he took account, of valleys and plains the measures he took. Where a landing place to establish, a place for the rocket ships he was seeking? And Lil by the heat of the sun afflicted, for a place of coolness and shade was searching. To snow-covered mountains on the Eden's north side he took a liking. The tallest trees he ever saw grew, there in a cedar forest. There above a mountain valley, with power beams the surface he flattened. Great stones from the hillside the heroes quarried, and to size cut. To uphold the platform with sky ships they carried, and emplaced them. With satisfaction did in Lil the handiwork consider. A work beyond belief indeed it was, a structure of everlasting. And a dope for himself on the crest of the mountain was his desire. Of the tall trees in the cedar forest, long beams were prepared. Of them, the construction of an adobe for himself he decreed. The adobe of the north crest he named it. On Nibiru, a new celestial chariot for soaring off was prepared. New kinds of rocket ships, sky ships, and that which Inki had designed it was transporting. A fresh group of fifty from Nibiru it was taking. Chosen females among them were, by Ninma, exalted lady, were they commanded, in sorcerer and healing were they trained. Ninma, exalted lady, a daughter of Anu she was, a half-sister, not a full sister, of Inki, and Enlil she was. In sorcerer and healing she was greatly learned. In the treating of ailments she excelled. To the complaints from earth she gave much attention, a healing was she preparing. The course of prior chariots on tablets of destinies recorded. Nungal, its pilot, did follow. Unharm, it reached the celestial god, Lamu. It circled the planet slowly. To its surface it descended. A fate beam, a group of heroes followed. Ninma was going with them. Beside a lake shore, Anzu, they found. From his helmet, the signals were beaming. Anzu himself was without motion, prostrate he lay dead. Ninma touched his face, to his heart she gave attention. From her pouch she took out the pulsar, upon Anzu's heart pulsing she directed. From her pouch she took out the emitter, its crystals life-giving emissions on the body she directed. Sixty times did Ninma direct the pulsar, sixty times the emitter she directed. On the sixtieth time, Anzu, his eyes opened, with his lips he motioned. Gently upon his face, Ninma, water of life poured, his lips with it wetting. Gently into his mouth the food of life she placed. Then the miracle did happen, Anzu from the dead arose. About Alalu they him then inquired. Of Alalu's death Anzu them told. He led them to a great rock from the plain heavenward protruding. There to them what had happened he was telling. Alalu soon after the landing from unremitting pain to scream began. From his mouth his innards he was spitting. In agony he peered over the wall. Thus was Anzu to them saying. He led them to a great rock like a mountain from the plain heavenward rising. In the great rock a cave I found. Alalu's corpse therein I hid. Its entrance with stones I covered, so was Anzu to them saying. They followed him to the rock, the stones they removed, the cave they entered, inside what of Alalu remained they found. He who once on Nibiru a king was a pile of bones, was in a cave now lying. For the first time in our annals, a king not on Nibiru has died, not on Nibiru was he buried, so did Nima say. Let him in peace for eternity rest, she was saying. They, the cave's entrance, again with stones covered. The image of Alalu upon the great rock mountain with beams they carved. They showed him wearing an eagle's helmet. His face they made uncovered. Let the image of Alalu forever gaze towards Nibiru that he ruled. Toward the earth whose gold he discovered. So Ninma, exalted lady, in the name of her father, Anu did declare, As for you, Anzu, to you, Anu, the king, his promise shall be keeping. 
Twenty heroes with you are here shall remain, the way station building to begin. Rocket ships from Earth the golden ores shall here deliver. Celestial chariots from here the gold to Nibiru shall then transport. Hundreds of heroes their adobe on Lamu shall make. You and Zu shall be their commander. Thus did the great lady in the name of her father Anu to Anzu say, My life I owe to you, great lady. So was Anzu saying, My gratitude to Anu shall limits not have. From the planet Lamu, the chariot departed toward earth, the journey it continued.